Hello, I'm Coach Jenny Hadfield and welcome to the Winter Running 101 webinar. You can watch the video or download the MP3 file and listen on the run. Now you may be thinking, running outside in the wintertime? Are you crazy? Although the cold weather in the holidays can really play havoc on your running regimen, it's truly one of the best seasons to be a runner. Outside of fall, it's one of my favorites. The weather is cool, the path isn't crowded, and the running outfits are just adorable. It's easier than you think, too. All you need are a few key strategies, a firm running goal, and you'll be running in any kind of weather, I promise you. I'm going to guide you through tips to keep you motivated, even on the coldest, darkest days, what to wear, special gear for your shoes, how to modify your form in the snow, and much, much more. So how about we get started? Here we go. There's nothing more motivating than to train for a race or have a specific goal to run for. For example, setting a goal to train for a 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon, any kind of distance race um, through the winter time gives every single run a purpose. Another thing that is really helpful if you don't want to train for a race is to set out a weekly goal. Uh, that could be in terms of minutes or miles of activity. Every year on the first day after Thanksgiving, I set out a holiday challenge. And basically the holiday challenge is six weeks long. We go from the day after Thanksgiving all the way through to January 1st. And it's really, really simple, but so effective for keeping people moving. Every Monday morning, you set out your weekly goal. It could be different based on how busy you're going to be, how you're traveling, if you've got a lot of holiday parties. So it's not the same every week. For example... Monday morning right after Thanksgiving, I set a goal. I'm going to do 20 miles per week. Some of that is in running. Some of it's walking. Some of it's cross training. The, the, the goal, the purpose of this whole thing, though, is to set a tangible goal every single week. Be accountable to that goal during your busiest times, most of which is in, th in the winter season, and then sticking to it and having fun with it. It really makes a significant difference. Because you'll have instant motivation in knowing you have to train for a race or hit your target mileage or minutes every week. And then you can reward yourself with a treat when you reach your goals and set another one after that. Make it safe and social. Run with a buddy or join a group. I can tell you over the last 20 plus years, I've spent almost every winter running along Chicago's Lakefront Path all winter long in a program called Winter Warriors. And it's one of my favorite seasons because A, it gets me out of bed early on a weekend morning. B, it's fun and social. I get to uh, multitask and see my friends, but also get in some great exercise. And C, it really breaks the hibernation. Um, we make a day of it, make a morning of it. We get in a run and then we go out for breakfast. And it's a big part of my winter uh, lifestyle. And it, A, it also is great for accountability because you know if you set out uh, to meet somebody, you're not going to sleep through that alarm clock. Um, it's a super built-in motivational source. You've got a friend to chat with or friends to chat with along the way. And it's also safer to run in numbers. It's a super time to get out on that path and get out on the roads. It's a beautiful time to run because your body's not fighting the uh, extra demands of trying to cool itself like we have in the summertime. But the hardest part, I think, is just getting out there and getting started and having it be social makes a significant difference in that. The best part of winter running, in my opinion, is the shopping. Having the right apparel makes all the difference in the world, too. Layering is the key to avoiding both over and under dressing. And what I mean by that, rather than just putting on one big layer and heading out, you know, a big puffy jacket and heading out to run... If you layer up with your first layer um, with a technical fabric that wicks the moisture away, usually it's called dry fit. Nike makes dry fit. There's dry leap. There's a whole bunch of products. Uh, every running brand makes uh, wicking clothing. So if you start with your inner layer of wicking material with your long sleeve top, um, I prefer to have a half zip long sleeve top. So if you get warm, you can zip that down. That's another option. Um, your tights, there are a lot of different layers or th wick thicknesses of tights. Uh, if you have a thinner layer, there's also a thicker layer for the colder days. Uh, but starting with that baseline, your, both your socks and your hat and your gloves, every one of those pieces have wicking capabilities so that it pulls the moisture away from your skin to keep you warm and dry when you're out there in the wind and the cold. And if you break it down head to toe, Certainly everybody's barometer is different, 
Some people, when it starts to get cold below uh, 40 degrees, uh, they'll add a hat, again, wicking material or a headband. Um, as you're going down, you can start with a long sleeve half zip shirt or a long sleeve shirt. Um, as it gets colder, you can make that more of a, a shirt that goes up, um, either a hoodie that goes over your head or uh, one that goes up and covers your neck to keep you a little bit warm. I mean, there's a lot of options. As you're making your way down, ladies, a wicking bra is really important. There's nothing worse than having a cold, wet bra against your skin. In fact, I wish they made more bras out of fleece material because that material keeps you really, really warm. Um, hopefully they will someday. Uh, making your way down, uh, obviously tights. There's different thicknesses of tights, as I mentioned before. Uh, starting off with a thinner layer in the cooler weather, and then if you are out there um, in the dead of winter when it's really, really cold in your area, you can go with a more thicker tight. Um, be cautious with that, by the way. Lots of them have zippers on the back of the calf, um, and lots of runners have problems with this rubbing on their Achilles. It can create, depending on how tight it is and where the zipper is, it can create and agitate your Achilles and cause some calf problems as well. So just a side note on that. And then socks. I usually, when I run in the wintertime, in the summertime, I'll wear a really lightweight, thin sock. In the wintertime, I'll wear a thicker winter sock. Uh, I, I use a, uh, one of the brands that I like the best for winter is called Drymax. I use those when I raced in Antarctica uh, because it wicks the moisture and they're thick and they're, they're fabulous. They keep your feet nice and warm and dry. And then finally, uh, your shoes. There are sh running shoes that are made for winter conditions. And basically what they do is they add a beefier outsole so the traction's a little bit better. In many cases, they'll make it out of a Gore-Tex material or a waterproof material as you're running through the snow and the slush and the wet. It really does a great job of keeping your feet dry. Um, however, some of these shoes tend to be a lot more stiff than a regular running shoe, so I tend to lean towards using those types of shoes only if you're really spending a ton of time outside in the winter. Other than that, uh, I would go with your regular go-to running shoe because you, it fits your foot and your body's used to that. Um, and you know, going with that with a heavier sock, can, can then you can use it both inside and out and you're not having to change the style of shoe. Uh, that may change in the future, but that's just my experience with um, winter running shoes. Just be cautious with that. So that takes care of the inside layer. The outside layer should have wind blocking materials and you want to have that jacket fit you. In other words, you don't want to have it be too large, which tends to be our mistake because it's, it's roomier, it tends to be a little more comfortable. When, when it's too large, air can, can seep in and then you get cold. When you have it fitted, and what, what happens is it works with that inner layer and it traps layers of warm air in between those layers and it keeps you nice and warm. So make sure you look for a running jacket that has wind blocking, uh, breathable capabilities. You don't want to have anything that doesn't breathe well because that'll keep you too warm, obviously. And again, there's a myriad of, of, of different jackets out there, a lot of, um, lot of options. Another option is a, on not so chilly days is you can add a vest. I love running in the fall uh, season with a vest, a shell vest um, or a fleece vest it keeps your core warm and it allows everything else to breathe. Um, but again, when it starts to get really windy and chilly, and again, that's different for everybody, um, start adding the shell layer. As it gets chillier, another thing that can be helpful, you've got your wicking gloves on your hands, is to add a shell mitten because it keeps, again, the moisture inside that shell. It blocks the wind. It keeps your hands really, really toasty warm. There are also gloves on the market that combine both of those materials so that you have kind of a glove and a mitten all in one. Again, if you have really cold hands, I would go with a double layer method, having a, a glove and then a mitten on the outside. It does a great job of keeping your hands nice and warm and toasty and dry. And then to finish out the outside layer, again, when it gets really, really chilly, uh, I add a pair of shell pants over my tights because it does the same thing as the jacket. Uh, keeps, it blocks the wind out and keeps that moisture, that warm air in between the tight layer and your shell pants. Really great for cold, wet days as well. And the final thing that I'll say, and it's a complete option, if you are running in significant snow or slush, having mini ankle gaiters 
um, around. They, they actually work around the outside of your shoe. They cover part of your shoe and they uh, wrap up above your tight layer. So they keep all the snow and the wet out of your socks and your shoes and really help prevent getting any kind of uh, snow or anything inside your shoe or your socks while you're running. Really important to be seen, especially if you're running in the dark hours of the morning or the evening. You know, most running apparel now in jackets uh, have reflective uh, devices on them, which is great. Adding some flashy red lights and or headlights really works well. Anything that you can wear so that you're more seen. Um, wearing darker clothes like black obviously is not a great idea. Um, wearing lighter clothing so that the cars can see you out there. It's really, really important to be seen on those roads. For those that are running in snow and ice, uh, there's a lot of great uh, devices on the market. This is tends to be my favorite. It's called Yak Tracks. They have them for, you know, workers, different, you know, recreational use, walkers, runners. This happens to be their run model. Um, and what it does is the coils on the heel actually work like chains on tires for trucks going through mountain passes. And then there are spikes in the forefoot of the yak tracks that help with traction. So it keeps, it easily fits over your shoe, your running shoe. Um, it's secured with a strap that goes over your forefoot. But when you're running on snow, uh, particularly snow, in many cases ice, it gives you better traction, which helps you run with better form because you're able to relax a little bit more and you're not so tense. Uh, when you're running in just snow with a regular shoe and it's really slippy, you tend to run under a lot of tension and tightness, which can translate to um, less efficient form and really achy muscles. And, you know, you're just a little more um, nervous about running out there. So, again, something that I've used for years and years and years. This is actually a new development. I haven't tried these yet. I'm looking forward to trying them, but it looks like the best of both worlds. It's a great brand. Um, the other thing that's that's important on these, which I learned the hard way, is don't put these on inside because they don't really work well on slippy floors. Um, I lost myself a couple of times in that. So you can learn from my mistakes. Um, and also, if you're not running on snow, let's say you get out and some of the course is snowy and some of it isn't, um, you don't want to run in these on the roads because they can break down pretty easily. So these are really great for if you're running on a trail or a path that has some snow on it or even roads that have snow on it. Really, really great device. And doubling up on cold days, basically what that means is just adding an insulation layer. So if you normally run with a running jacket and tights and a long sleeve shirt, you can add that vest or a second layer, um, add a pair of shell pants, that kind of thing, doubling up your hands you know, adding a, a hat or a balaclava that goes over your face, not baklava, balaclava, big difference. Um, so doubling up when the temperatures start to drop. And dressing for 15 to 20 degrees warmer than the current temperature. This is really um, important because the, the, the tendency is to dress so that you're warm when you go outside. I, I do this every season, so if you're still doing that, no worries. If you walk outside and you want to dress to be warm, well, if you walk outside for a run and it's chilly out and you're warm, that means you're overdressed because your body temperature increases as you move. So a good rule of thumb, let's say it's 30 degrees, you want to dress for 45 to 50. Again, everybody's barometer is different, but it's a good general rule of thumb that works every time. Also, you have to consider where the wind's coming from. If it's windier, you have to put that wind chill in as well. Less is more, as always. You'd be surprised at how little clothing you have to wear uh, when you're out there running in the cold in the winter. And then finally, keep track in your log because what works for you may not work for somebody else, um, vice versa. And every season that you run through, if you keep a log of what works for you on different temperature days and different elements, then you have that ready to go and you don't have to second guess yourself every season. Invest extra time to warm up in the winter because your body will warm up more slowly in the cold weather, especially if you're running in the morning. Take at least five minutes to walk or run walk briskly before you start to run. It may take you 10 to 15 minutes of running before you're completely warmed up and in your running tempo. A tip that works really well if you have the time to take a hot shower to pre-warm your muscles or put your clothes in the dryer on hot for a few minutes before you head out for a run. Stay low and relaxed. What I mean by that is shorten your running stride and keep your feet lower to the ground. 
You'll run more efficiently and reduce the risk of slipping, falling, and straining muscles. Then when you're running in snow, you want to choose the snow that's fresh over ice or packed snow. You'll get better traction on fresh snow and reduce the chance of slipping. And watch out for snow-covered cracks and holes in the road as well. You really have to be mindful. It's like trail running in the wintertime. It's also important to stay relaxed when you're running on the snow and the ice because the more tense you are, the more it's going to affect your form and the more fatigued and sore you're going to be. And also the likelihood of you slipping and falling is going to be much higher. So try to think uh, relaxing thoughts and relax your body. You know, that little tips like every mile that you run or every five to ten minutes, just think through what your body's uh, doing and just think nice, calm thoughts and relax your body head to toe. Also important is to start your run into the wind so that you have the wind at your back on your way home. This way you'll avoid getting chilled by the wind after you've been sweating. Another important tip for winter running is to pace yourself by effort rather than your speed. Lots of cases um, you may be running faster than what you normally can in the summertime or the hot warmer weather because your body doesn't have to put forth so much energy to cool itself. So on a nice, cool, crisp day, you might actually pace yourself faster at easier efforts. And on the other hand, on snowy, slushy, really challenging terrain days, you're certainly going to be slower. It's going to take a lot more effort, or on a windy day for that matter. It's going to take a lot more effort to get you through. So if you end up pace, training yourself or running by speed or pace rather than what your body is what's going on in your body, you can end up over and under training in many cases and pushing way, way too hard. And a super easy way to train by effort is to tune in to your breathing rhythm. An easy effort, I typically train folks by three categories to keep it really simple, easy, moderate, and hard. Easy effort is an effort where you can have a conversation, you can talk out loud, it's conversational pace. Moderate is one step up from that. You start to hear your breathing. You can talk, but it's in words. And then hard is hard. It, it's an effort for you to get a word out, um, and your breathing is a lot more vigorous. So if you break it down into those three effort levels, keep it simple, and listen in, tune into your body, you'll get a lot more out of your runs uh, day for day. Hydrate when you're out there, especially if you're out there longer than 45 to 60 minutes. It's just as important to drink fluids in your winter runs as it is in the summer. Make sure you're hydrating before, during, and after to, to avoid dehydration, especially in the dry months of winter. And a really great tip I learned from a friend is to use warm fluids in your water bottle to avoid it freezing, or you can tuck it under your uh, jacket if it's a really super windy day. Remember to include regular stretching and foam rolling or deep tissue muscle massage post-run. Uh, especially when you're running on ice and snow. If you are running on ice and snow or in the cold weather, muscles and tendons tend to get a little more tight, and we tend to sit a little bit more during the winter time, depending on where you live in the winter. Um, so make sure you're including regular flexibility in your schedule post-run when your muscles are warm. And keep it fun. Mix up your route, run through the neighborhood to see the holiday lights, or run a holiday race in a Santa costume. It's going to get you outside, and you're going to enjoy winter rather than cursing it. And finally, be a wise winter warrior. When there are weather alerts, it's bone chilling cold, icy, hit the treadmill. Treadmill running is a fantastic way to stay fit and you're going to get in quality without the risk of an injury along the way. Leave your ego out of it. Treadmills are fantastic primarily because they give you good quality. You're already warm. They're convenient, especially in the dark hours. They're safe. It allows you to maintain the continuity and the momentum of your training and your running. Uh, typically, during the winter months, I'll mix about a 50-50 uh, outdoor to indoor uh, running recipe, and it works well for me, and it can work well for you as well. There's lots of folks that do all outside running, all inside running. Um, just know that when it is really cold out, don't try and prove anything to anybody. Play it safe and get in on that treadmill. Thank you for joining me in the Winter Running 101 webinar. Shh, say that fast 10 times. Run safe and strong this season.